Hello YouTube, I am Arnd Peter, and today I want to tell you three ways to make the camera follow the player. The first way is using the view settings in the room properties tab, and then I'm going to show you how to do the same thing using only code, and then once we're switched over to code, I can show you how to do a cool tweening effect to make your game look that little bit extra polished. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Let's jump into it. So to start off with, I've got a few assets already loaded. I've got some sprites for tile sets and my player. I've got the tile sets for those sprites, and I have a player um, object, player object. And then the only thing I have going on in this player object is just some simple movement code. Just move left and right so we can test this. Then I have a room, and I'm calling it RM long. And there we go. It just has the tile set layers and then it has that player object. I'll just go ahead and run the game to show you what we have to start with. So we just got like one one window that's really long and I can move the player left and right. So I want to make the camera zoomed in and I want to have it follow the player. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into this room editor tab here on the left and I'm gonna go into the room properties section of that tab and then I'm going to go under viewports and cameras. So there's actually two things I want to achieve here. Uh, first off, I want to make the camera zoom in more because I have like a pixel art game and I want it to kind of um, be zoomed in better. And then the second thing I want to do is have it follow the player. So I need to enable viewports. Then we're going to work under viewport zero and set it to visible. So uh, the default view size is much too big for my room. So for my room, 320 by 180 works a lot better. But I don't want to actually show up at 320 by 180 on the window. So um, to change that, we need to go into our viewport properties. So this, so these numbers, it represents how big the view is in the room itself. And then these numbers on our viewport represents how big the view is in the window. So I'm going to make these all bigger, like so. All right, so that on its own should make it zoom in to my pixel art game, make the window a little bigger. And then to follow the player, it's very simple. We just go into this object following section and select our player object. Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and test this out. All right, it is zoomed in. We have a nice view of the player. And if I move right, camera follows the screen. Now there's a couple things I want to note here. The screen doesn't actually move until the player is pretty close to the edge, which might, may or may not be desirable. So to fix that, we can change this horizontal border variable to make it something bigger. Let's say, I don't know, 100. So there we go. So there's a lot of padding there. So that might be nice if you want to make sure the player doesn't have any surprises for what appears next to the camera. One thing to note here is that if I move far enough left, it'll let me violate that border. It'll let me get closer to the edge than that border would normally allow. And that's because by default, um, Gimmick won't let the view go outside the room. And that's probably what you want for most of you, like because what's outside the room in my case is just blackness. So that's fine, but just wanted to point that out for later. Now, if you want it to be always centered on the player, this border needs to be greater than half of your view width. So in this case, my view width is 320. So I'm, in theory, making it 160 should keep the player centered. But I could go crazy if I wanted to make it 1,000, and that would work as well. Um, this also has the added benefit of keeping it centered even if I make the um, view a little bit bigger. All right, so if I move left and right now, you can see that it's always centered, unless of course I get close to the room edge, which as we said, will make us get closer than the border would normally allow. So next I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing using only code. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this object following back to none. I'm gonna go into the workspace and I'm going to go into my player set vent and add some view movement code. Okay, I'm gonna show I'm gonna go ahead and type it out and explain afterwards. All right, so we have this camera set view position function, which will move our camera to a different position. 
Uh, the first argument, we need to tell it which camera. So um, this is an array listing all the cameras. And we just need to put in the number corresponding to the camera we want to adjust. So if you notice, there are a lot of viewports in this room. And we made all of our adjustments in viewport 0. So that's the one we're going to be working with. Um, so that's that. And then we say the position of the camera. And note that this represents the top left corner of the camera. If I want the player to be centered, it'll be x minus view get camera get width divided by two. Oops, I forgot that. So this function will give us this will give us the camera width, and then we divide it by two to get half the width. So if we do the player's x minus half the width, if you think about it, that will essentially put the player in the center. Now we could have done the same thing with the y to do camera get uh, view height, but in this case maybe I want the um, player to be more towards the bottom of the screen because usually there's more interesting things above you than below you. So I can just set the number I want right here. And likewise, if you wanted the player to be like, I don't know, towards the left side of the screen for here, you could also put in like a number, a hard coded number, or you could of course make this like smaller, divided by four or something like that. That'll put the player in the left half. And that might also be helpful for your game if there's uh, a lot of space to your to the right. If the player is always moving to the right, then you want it to be able to see more to the right. Make sense? Okay. Um, let me go ahead and show you how this looks. Okay, so it seems to work, but but as you can see, it's actually letting the view go outside of the room. And I mentioned earlier that in the other system, it would uh, enforce that rule where it wouldn't let the view go outside the room. But now that we're doing it in code, we have to do that ourselves. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm actually going to pull these um, x, y positions that we're setting for the camera. I'm going to pull them out into separate variables, like so. And I'm adding var in front of them because I want these variables to only exist in this script. We're only using them temporarily. And now before I actually set the camera pos view position, I want to limit the range of these variables to make it only be within the room. And here's how you do that. Alrighty. So I'm using this clamp function. And clamp does is it takes a value and then you can set a min and max for that value as you can see down here and then it will limit the, the value to be within that range. So if it's less than the min, it'll return the min. If it's greater than the max, it'll return the max. If it's already in between, it'll just return the value back. So in our case, if we don't want to go to the left of the room, the smallest our camera x value can be is 0. And then if we don't want to go to the beyond the right of the room, that's a little bit trickier. So. Um, if it's at the right of the room, then the camera's the right side of the camera would be at room width. But we are setting the top left corner of the camera right here. So we actually need to subtract the width of the camera in order to get the top left corner of the camera. And then we can do the same thing for cam Y, and this will also limit it to be within the range of the room. Okay, so now we can go ahead and hit play and let's see what happens. And there we go. It is limited to be within the room. All right, awesome. So right now what we have is very similar to what we had um, previously. Um, maybe we don't have the border logic, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. So why would you want to do this? So one of the reasons I alluded to earlier is if you want the player to be anchored somewhere other than the center of the room, like maybe you want to be anchored over here to the left or something like that, then uh, you can do that with code. Um, that's one of the reasons you might want to do this with code. Another reason is, as you saw earlier, um, we're not limited to be within the room, and a lot of times that's not what you want, but sometimes it is what you want. Like if you're making a procedural game, maybe you don't care about the room borders. And another reason you might want to do this is um, notice that we're referencing the camera width a lot in this logic, um, which we didn't really need to. Like we could have just 
figured out what the camera width was and just plugged in 320 every time since we already know the camera width. But sometimes you don't know the camera width. Like I've made a lot of mobile games in the past and um, every device you run your game on is going to have a different dimension. So if you have a game that can have win the window size be uh, resizable, then you're going to need to make your logic more flexible to handle that and putting in these values is not going to cut it. And on top of that, if you're like me, then doing things in code just feels better for the soul. So if that's you, then writing it in code is enough of a reason in and of itself because uh, code feels very good to write. Okay, um, so before we get on to the third uh, trick I want to show you, I want to show you a little convenience technique that I use and a lot of other people use. So, And before we get into that, I'm going to give you a quick little history lesson for context. I used, um, I started using GameMaker in about GameMaker 7. I think it might have even been GameMaker 6, a long time ago. So back then, if you wanted to do something as simple as, as this, as getting the camera width, you would write it like so, view w view. Really simple, a lot shorter. So this was perfectly fine, but then once GameMaker Studio 2 came along, they changed it to, the, to these camera functions, which don't get me wrong, the camera functions are great. They're, they did it for for a good reason. If you look at all these camera functions, there's a lot you can do with it, and it opens a lot, up a lot of possibilities. But for people who only do like basic things with cameras, they kind of missed this W view um, style of interacting with it, like this shorter um, style. So uh, me and a lot of other like old school cranky people, um, decided to take things into our own hands and make custom functions which allowed us to type less. So um, let me go ahead and pull up this link here and what you can see here is these are my uh, shorter functions. So as an example here, if we look at cam y, all it'll do is return that line, the corresponding line in the new game maker. And the other nice thing about this is you can actually pass in values to this function and it'll change the y. Um, so here you can see it calls cam pause, and if I look at cam pause, it's calling um, camera set view position, which is what we were calling earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go click raw here, I'm going to copy all of that, and I'm going to show you how you can use these in your game in case you also want that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new script. Create script and paste it there and shorter camera. All right, now we have all of these convenience functions available to us. So let me show you how much simpler this gets when we, when we are using these new functions. And there you have it. Here's with the convenience functions. Here's with the original functions. I like this better. But I think it's important to know both and understand uh, what GameMaker is actually doing. All right, so last but not least, I want to show you uh, a way to make the camera ease and move more smoothly. So right now, as you can see, when I'm moving the player left and right, it is locked to the player. But what would be nice and what um, a lot of uh, um, more polished games do, especially if you think about the third-person AAA studio type games, is they have a little bit of an easing effect where the camera won't immediately jump to the to the target. It'll kind of move closer smoothly. So let me show you how to do that. Um, if I go back over here. So I'm going to take our cam x, cam y variables, and I'm going to call it target x and target y. So this isn't actually where we want the camera to move to this frame. This is where I want to eventually be. I want this to be the target. So then let me show you how I'll set the cam X after that. And here's how that looks. So I'm using this lerp function. And what this lerp function says is it takes two values, your starting and ending position, or your value one and your value two. In this case, I'm giving it my current camera and the target camera, X value. And then you give it a percentage, or a number between zero and one. So if this is 0.5, I'm telling this to give me a value that's halfway between the first value and the second value. But in this case, we're doing 0.1, so 
So we're doing like 10% of the way through the, between the first value and the second value. So what ends up happening here is if the player moves to the right, the target X and the camera X are, are different, or your, your camera's X is different from the target X. And then every frame, this logic will end up moving the camera 10% closer to the, to the player. And in the beginning, those are going to be fairly big steps because they're far apart. But as the camera gets closer, 10% becomes less and less. It's kind of like a Zeno's paradox type situation, as you can see here, where the first jump is going to be really big, but then it's going to keep making smaller and smaller jumps until it gets to its final destination. And the whole thing about Zeno's paradox is that it goes on infinitely. You never get to the destination because you keep getting closer and closer. But we don't need to worry about that so much because once you get to the pixel level, like you can't exactly move like half a pixel or 10% of a pixel. So once you get within a pixel, you're there's only so much closer you can get. So you actually do converge in um, in the game maker sense. All right, so these two extra lines add a lot of polish to your game. Let's find. Let's take a look. And I'm I'm gonna actually let me just change these to point oh five to make it a little bit more extreme. Now when the player forces the camera to move, you can see it's like smoothly adjusting to the player. It looks really nice. Those two lines add a lot. So I actually first learned this from another tutorial um, made by Real Touch GML, and I'm going to link to his as well. And he he made that as part of a series. I think he called it Squishy Effects or something like that. I, sh I should really look this up. Let me... Ah, here it is, Juicy Effects, and then um, the tutorial was Smooth Counter Movement and. Okay, wow, that was made back in 2013. I feel dated now. But anyway, um, link to this playlist because he goes through some other effects here as well. Um, that's going to be in the description. Um, okay, so that is all for this tutorial. Um, and, oh, actually, no, it's not quite all for this tutorial. I want to note that you can change this number to make it more or less extreme. So at 0.05, it's pretty extreme. You, it, it takes it a while to get to converge to the player, but then if we make it something like 0.2, you can see it goes much faster. So um, you're going to have to tweak that to whatever feels right for your game. <sighs> okay, that is all for the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I want to go ahead and quickly mention that this is actually part of a playlist I'm making where I make a castle-themed game and I teach a lot of uh, platforming-based um, concepts. So uh, the demo of the, of the final product is on the screen right now. And if any of those effects that you see in that final product look interesting to you, uh, there's a tutorial for that. And if you look at the playlist, you can find a tutorial for that specific one. Um, I guess a good, good place to start, if you, if you haven't already, is to probably the, the platforming tutorial. So you can do more than just make the player move left and right. You can make them jump around and all that. So loads of fun. Um, and that is everything. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you hope to see you in my other tutorials.